peas for sure. See, these are really red. Upland rice, which is a dry land rice, you know, not a, not a lagoon or marsh rice, it, it grows in dry soil. Right now, you know, we have a renaissance. The appeal of garlic cuisine is really, really spreading throughout the country. People are interested in this culture, and food is the best way to kind of show a culture sometimes. You get it in your belly, you get a taste of it. I'm Chef BJ Dennis, and I am an ambassador for Gullah Geechee culture through food. Papa John is a part of the rice culture. It came through the African diaspora. You know, you see peas and rice in so many cultures, but the roots of it go back to West Africa. It's become synonymous with New Year's Eve because of good luck. Peas and rice represent good luck. You have a bit of greens, represents money. You know, you got good luck and you got money, right? You can't beat that. First thing with Hop and John is if you're using some smoked meat, you want to get that in the pot and get that boiling. So you want to get that nice and tender. We're going to crank this stove right on up and throw a lid on it. And we let that go for about 30, 40 minutes until it's nice and tender. So while we got our ham hock, you know, boiling, we can start prepping up our other stuff. You know, we got a nice white onion right here. We're just gonna do a nice little dice on this onion. Flavor comes out better. Actually adds a little dimension of sweetness. So we got a nice green pepper today. Um, we're not gonna need all this. So I'll probably do about uh, half of this green bell pepper. Small dice. So we're gonna take two cloves of garlic that we're gonna mince. And one of the secrets to mincing garlic is Add a little bit of salt. It will help from sticking. It makes your life easier. And it's all about what you like. I mean, some people like a little more garlic than others. This is a dish that you cook, you know, how you feel. Your vibration is what you like. And one thing we also want to do is make sure we go through our peas to see if there's any peas like this right here. To this day, some people still hand shell the peas. If you grew up with country parents, you, you really remember those days on the porch with your granny shelling peas. You may not have liked it, but you had to do it if you wanted to eat. Our ham hock is kind of at the halfway point. The skin's starting to separate. It means it's starting to loosen up. I'm going to take a little bit of these peas. Probably going to do about a cup to a cup and a half of peas in here. I got our sea island red peas in here. These are especially important to our Gullah Geechee culture because these peas are supposedly an original descendant from West Africa. And one of the peas that came here through the transatlantic uh, enslavement trade. So these are very, very important. We're just starting to see these come back. We got our onion, bell pepper, and garlic. We're gonna get some of that in, into the pot. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this homemade pepper vinegar. This is a personal preference. It gives a little aromatic flavor, it gives it some, a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweetness, and a little bit of acidity, just a little bit of acidity. And we're gonna give this a quick stir just to see where we at. Our peas are cooking. And at this point, like I said, you gotta look, watch your water. So in a little bit, I may have to add a little more water because the peas may suck up some of that liquid. But at this point also, I'm gonna add some more dry spices. It kind of helps give it a little, I call it a little boom to the pot. A little more, a little more flavor, a nice essence. Pinch of salt. I have onion powder, garlic powder here. Good pinch of onion powder, good pinch of garlic powder. Paprika. I don't know if we call it paprika, but my geechiness will say paprika. Cayenne pepper. Got a little bit of seasoning salt. And a little bit of garlic salt. I'm gonna give that a stir. The peas have started to soak up a lot of the water. Peas need water so it can bloom. So we're gonna add a little more water and put our lid on and let it ride. Just enough to cover. Now we grab our rice. We're gonna take it over to our sink and give it a nice little rinse. We're gonna wash this rice and until the water clears. We want the greens to be, you know, green for green, separate. We call it dry, but not dry in the sense it's dry to the palate, but just dry like every grain is separate, but moist. It's kind of the Gullah Geechee way. We're probably gonna do this about four to six times with this type of rice, you know, because it's not processed. It cooks differently than what our typical store rice. So you wanna definitely give it a wash that neutralizes the starches in it, and it won't be as sticky. All right, so I'm gonna check my Seattle red peas. Give it a taste. Pretty much want the beans to be cooked where it would be edible right then and there. Mmm, tender. So now we go grab our rice. 
We got our rice in there. And at this point, we're gonna add just enough water to cover the rice. Add a little more water here. Put our pot back on the stove, give it a little stir, and we get a, a little taste to make sure our salt level, our spice level is where we want it. If I go back three times, I'm, I'm happy. It's, it's tasting good. Lid on, and we let it cook for 30 minutes. All right, so now we're gonna check on our Hoppin' John. Looking nice and luscious, ready to roll. We always fluff our rice with a fork. You know, make sure the grains are nice and separate. I think I'm happy with that. We're gonna dish this up. Here we have y'all South Carolina Hoppin' John, the Gullah Geechee way.